It's Baby Yoda. Hey everyone, Ryan here, or Eminar Productions, and welcome to Ask Eminar, episode 142, the series where I answer your questions. If you have questions, leave them in the comments section down below, and I might answer it next week when I go through and pick them out. Also, thank you guys so much for like damn near 100,000 views and 5,000 likes on last week's episode. That's insane, so just wanna say thanks. Anyway, first question from Captain Solo says, if you could have a canon Star Wars prop, what would it be? So I don't know why, but I just remember watching like, I think it was like the Empire of Dreams documentary from way, way back in the day. And I always really liked the lightsabers. I always wanted a lightsaber prop from Star Wars. So I think my answer is gonna have to be a lightsaber prop. I, I just think it'd be really cool. I remember, I feel like they had like some bendy squishy ones. I don't know if that's real or not, if me just making it up in my imagination, but that's my memory. And like that kind of stuff always fascinated me. So yeah, if I could have one prop from a Star Wars movie, absolutely be a lightsaber. And at that, either like Anakin's from episode three or Darth Maul's, probably Anakin's from episode three though. That's like my classic, like when I was just really getting into Star Wars and like, yeah, that's the one. That boy says, are you going to get the PS5 on November 12th? Hopefully, I assume I'm getting it because I've already paid for it. Best Buy has my money. I spent like three hours with my friend Jared trying to pre-order it online during the whole fiasco at like 2 a.m. a few nights ago when they went live early on, on pre-orders and whatnot. So yeah, uh, I did get one pre-ordered. It's completely done, ready to go. So I'm actually really excited, looking forward to it. PS5, if you got yourself PS5, congrats. If you don't, good luck. If you're getting something else, have fun with that. The only game I plan on getting with it, at least at launch, is Call of Duty Cold War. However, I might pick up uh, Star Wars Squadrons on it. I've been wanting to play that whenever that comes out. I don't keep up with it. I don't know exactly when it comes out. If it's on PS5, I want to get on PS5. If it's not on PS5, I'll get on PS4, no big deal. And then of course, uh, Star Wars The Skywalker Saga will probably be another game I get for it when that comes out next year though. Oh my God. The Bearded Brick says, and this is kind of like piggybacking off of our conversation last week from like uh, Lego Star Wars ending. Uh, what would you do if Star Wars Lego were to cease to exist? Would you switch over to focusing on another theme or continue to hunt for Star Wars sets until you have them all? Is there another career you would try picking up? So it would be very interesting if Lego Star Wars ended for me, um, as far as like Lego producing sets behind it. Obviously I could still make content on it for quite a while. I don't know why I would have to stop, but it would obviously wane in popularity with without the backing of the thing that creates it. I would definitely continue making videos about it, but it would just become more periodic over time because you just wouldn't have that content of like, what's coming out next? Or what would we wanna see next? Or here's the new sets, whatnot, whatnot, you know. I don't know if you already noticed, but I already have been bringing in new themes on the channel. Like my channel originally started basically exclusively Lego Star Wars, but the last two years, I mean, if you look at my library of content, I definitely have spread my wings a little bit, so to speak, and you know, we've hit Lego Movie 2, we've had some creator sets, um, I got Jurassic World that I like, really loving the Harry Potter stuff, so I feel like I'm becoming more of a branched out Lego person, although I still obviously focus in on Star Wars a lot because that's what I really love, but damn, some of those other sets are really good too, and there's nothing wrong with that. So yeah, I'd continue making videos about Lego Star Wars, absolutely. I don't know exactly what they would be, obviously I could do stuff based on all the old sets and whatnot comparisons I still hadn't done and whatnot collection videos and I'd still be buying older sets. It's not like I would just stop collecting. And then like, is there another career I'd pick up? It just depends on if that happened when it happened, right? So like my, my ultimate backup plan always has been if YouTube ever fails badly, like really badly, I would just go back to school. I don't think that's a big deal. Get my degree in marketing or whatever I would want to get it in and uh, go into that field. But there's an alternate universe in which I take it and I take this channel and I go, all right, I guess I won't make Lego videos anymore. I make a new channel. I've always wanted to create like a new channel for this too. Um, and just do like YouTuber YouTube videos and like, I don't know, whatever that entails, but like fun stuff with that because I think that's also a really fun thing I still want to do regardless of whether or not it's like a full-time living career thing it still would be really fun to do. Roar says, what are your thoughts on the Yoda's lightsaber hilt? I really like to have similar sets in the future. What do you think? So my review on that will actually be out tomorrow. So I don't want to spoil too much about that, but I didn't love it. I basically finished building it and I was like, well, that's it. Maybe the fact that I paid $110 on eBay factored into that, but I honestly don't think so. I usually don't really think about how much I paid for something when I'm like thinking about what it is. I just, that's just not something that really creeps into my mind at all. I guess it is what you expected it to be. It's a lightsaber hilt, but it just wasn't that exciting of a 
model to the like, have in front of me at all. Like it's good, it is what it's supposed to be, and it can't really be anything more. It, it's weird because for years and years, I always thought lightsaber hilts would be this great thing. And when they finally make them, because you know, obviously with the trend of them going 18 plus with some of the sets that it would be an obvious thing for them to do. And of course, here we are, they did it. But having had one now, I could live without it. I could live without more. I definitely could. I know you, you say you want more. We might get more. But we also might not, because I think this is a situation similar to the Star Wars CMFs, where like Lego can't just do Star Wars CMFs because Hasbro owns the right to sell Star Wars action figures, and minifigures, whether you and I agree or not, are considered action figures in the eyes of the contracts. And to that point, there probably exists a similar contract between Disney and another company to exclusively make lightsaber hilts and be able to sell them. And the way Lego had skirted the minifigure thing was they gave them away for free as a gift with purchase, and you may very keenly notice Yoda's lightsaber as a gift with purchase. Now this is by no means like 100% guaranteeing that that exists and that they won't start selling them next year, but it is kind of fishy in that way that it's only a gift with purchase and that they didn't just start making them for sale. I thought it was gonna be years until we'd see something like this. I didn't think Lego needed to do lightsaber hilts right away and show their hand because lightsaber hilts are obvious for them to make, but I thought they could just wait a few years basically because there's just no reason to rush into everything you could possibly do ever at the same time. So I just thought it'd be spaced out more. I was surprised to see it so soon. It's not that great. I've probably talked too long about this. <laughs> Nighttime says, do you think there'll be more sets that will connect to Moss Eisley and Obi-Wan's hut? Nope, I don't think so at all. Um, kind of unfortunately. Moss Eisley Cantina, absolutely not. There's nothing left to add on. That set is self-contained. And other than Luke's land speeder, I don't think the Obi-Wan's hut really adds anything. But Luke's land speeder goes, goes nicely with it because it makes sense in the scene. Obviously you'll get some crossover minifigs, but it is what it is. I mean, Obi-Wan's hut's still nice, but it doesn't connect to it. You just kind of throw it off to the side type of thing. Luke's land speeder like works within the, the space, right? And Obi-Wan's hut will probably confuse me for a long time, at least maybe until I get to interview some Lego Star Wars designers. I'll definitely bring that up. I mean, maybe at the end of the day, those clips are for lightsabers, but to me, it doesn't make sense because they have a box for the lightsaber. So I don't know what the deal is. Um, it seemed like such a weird thing to leave as an open end with clips. And right now it's just a mystery because it definitely does not connect to Moss Eisley and it does not connect to any other Lego Star Wars set that currently exists. And like the January 2021 wave doesn't seem to bring anything to light that would connect to that. So it just seems like it's always gonna be an open end and we're definitely not getting Obi-Wan's bathroom next year. So I don't know what it's gonna be. Elliot Dyson says, how come Lego have stopped putting rare minifigures like chrome gold seats 3PO in sets. So they've never said why, and there's no like exact reason why, but I'd be happy to spitball with you. So my main thing I think with this is that it just makes consumers upset and people complain about it, right? Like they don't get the Chrome C3PO and they're like, oh, this sucks. Why did I buy it? So I think that might have something to do with it. As far as Lego Star Wars goes, to my knowledge, they've only done it twice with the 2007 Chrome Gold C3PO and 2009 Chrome Vader. I was really hoping they would do it again for the 20th anniversary because like back then I did not have the means to buy a lot of sets and try to find stuff like that. I never was able to find one as said. Fortunately, I was able to purchase them now later on. But I thought the hunt would be fun. Maybe they just decided it just didn't work as well as they wanted as like a marketing tool to sell more things, or it just made their consumers upset, or some combination thereof and other factors. But to the flip side of that, ever since they've stopped doing that, they've started doing the gift with purchases. I don't think they had really done gift with purchases prior to that. So the kind of market and landscape has shifted with those types of things anyway. So that may also be another reason why we don't see stuff like that. I'm not exactly sure why, but those are some reasons maybe. Terminate 14 says, do you think Lego is considering turning Harry Potter into a permanent theme like Star Wars and superheroes? So it's kind of an interesting concept of what would be a permanent theme, right? Like at what point does Harry Potter become that? Because the way Harry Potter kind of started out in its return, or it seems to be, is that they kind of progress through the movies like the first year 2018 uh sets were like harry potter one and two uh the second year in 2019 was like harry potter movies three and four and then i you know five and six seven and eight is what i kind of thought we were going to see or seven and seven but we started to get a mix here in this year and i'm curious if it will become more of a mainstay it has definitely done exceptionally well they've made some really nice big sets it could be more of a mainstay like batman like i know superheroes is more of an all-encompassing term um, but like Batman gets like a few sets a year and that may be enough for Harry Potter because Harry Potter isn't this like super expansive thing as far as I'm aware. It's not quite like Star Wars 
in quite like superheroes where you just have this vast amount of stuff over God knows how many movies, TV shows, whatever. Harry Potter feels more contained, right? It's a, it's basically takes place at one place, which is Hogwarts, and there's only so much that really goes on there. So to be honest, I think it's hard for Lego here because you have Harry Potter, which isn't gonna have more like Harry Potter, Harry Potter films. I know they have the Fantastic Beasts, but I don't think those sets will ever do as well as the actual Harry Potter ones. And the question becomes, how many times can you remake things like the Hogwarts train within the same like 10 years? So if they keep Harry Potter around for 10 years, do we see the Harry Potter train two more times? Like that seems repetitive and not great to me, but then again, they do that with Star Wars, but the counterpoint to that is with Star Wars, there's always new content coming in with Harry Potter, not quite so much. The answer is I think it already is a permanent theme until they decide to not make it that. Basically until they run out of ideas or run it into the ground. They probably also like Star Wars like we talked about last week have a licensing agreement. That will end at some point and maybe whenever that ends, I should probably Google this. Let's Google this. I can't find any type of end date to it, but I would guess it might have been like a five year deal and I would just keep your eye on it after the next two years that it could kind of wrap up because they'll have kind of done everything again in Harry Potter, remade a lot of those older sets and at that point, what do you do? So I'm not quite sure, but definitely an interesting question and something to keep your eye on. Sam says, what if the X-Wing and TIE Fighter are the same piece counts as the ones we got a few years ago? Would you like the wave more? So this is in reference to the January or spring 2021 Lego Star Wars wave and basically saying if the sets were bigger, would I like them more? One, we haven't seen the sets, so I don't actually know if I like the sets. I personally, and what I think most people uh, don't like is the selection of sets, right? It's that we're getting all these original trilogy sets while Clone Wars is the hot thing and it just feels neglected. That's the problem. It has nothing to do with that the sets are gonna be small or whatnot and that might be a problem. We'll see. We don't know for sure yet, but the big problem right now that a lot of people have is the selection. 24 Harder says, what are your thoughts on Lego now changing to paper bags instead of plastic? Hey, I think it's been a long time coming. It makes a lot of sense, right? Lego's always been so environmentally conscious or at least like within the past decade, they've been making a big fuss about it. Fuss sounds like it has a negative connotation, but it's definitely a good thing. And it just makes sense for them to do this, right? I don't see why one is more recyclable than the other, to be fair, right? Like I put the plastic things in the recycling bin every time. Those should go to the recycling plant and be recycled. I assume that's what happens to them. And paper would be all the same. I'd put it in the recycle bin. It would go to the recycle place, blah, blah, blah. But I think the difference between paper and plastic really in this case would be that it's more biodegradable. If for whatever reason it ends up in a landfill, the plastic obviously gonna stand, stay there for thousands and thousands or I don't know, millions of years, God knows how long, but the paper will decompose maybe within five years or something, I don't know, could disintegrate in the rain. So that's the difference to me is the paper versus plastic thing would be the biodegradability. Lord Master says, opinions on the recent Republic brick controversy. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about, but you should check out Timmy and I's podcast, The Bad Bricks, which we just did the first episode of last week, it was great. We had at one point up to 78 live viewers on our first show, which was pretty awesome. So it's a little show, it's just something we do. It's kind of unfiltered. We talk about a lot of stuff that isn't Lego. So if you're into that kind of stuff and you wanna watch two guys talk about it, then that might be the place for you. I'll have a link down below, a little self promo here, why not? T Brick says, have you watched the Mandalorian season two trailer? And if so, did you like it? So last week's episode would have talked about this. I'd already like uploaded the video before I saw the trailer, so it's kind of too late to get it in there. But trailer looked pretty good. I like that they use audio from like last season so that you don't get like too many hints because I really don't want a ton revealed about the season. I want to watch it and enjoy learning new things. Like keep the secret secret. Why would you reveal all your stuff in the trailers? Like people are going to buy Disney plus and watch it anyway. You're not selling a movie ticket. I was just really happy that it felt kind of vague and everything. It looks good though. It looks damn good. Of course it looks good. What else am I going to say? I was impressed. I enjoyed it. It was nice having that little baby Yoda clip where he closes the thing to, to stay away from all the bad guys. It was kind of weird. I saw, I saw a picture on Reddit or something. It was like uh, the Gamorrean guards. And usually you think of them from Jabba's palace and they're these fat, big old pig things. And there's a scene where they're fighting. It's a Gamorrean fighter club or something. And um, you, you look at it and they're skinny. They're, they're, built and whatnot they're like in shape and it's very weird and different so i think we're gonna see a lot more cool stuff like that out of star wars in this case and uh, it's very interesting looking so i'm definitely excited for it definitely gonna be watching it starting on october 30th whenever it drops i'll be there midnight 3 a.m i don't care i'm there i'm filming this video at 4 30 a.m so i'll be there sas heavy dog says do you think they're decreasing their lego prices or just making sets smaller while i haven't done this research definitively myself what i've heard um is that if you do look at like the price 
per piece or the sets that we're getting year over year. The sets in general as a trend are getting better price per piece wise, quality wise, very obviously you can just look at two sets, one set from 20 years ago, one set from now, and you can tell. I think Lego in general has become a better deal over time. Now, there are exceptions to the rule as with anything like that, but Lego has improved a ton and I think that's undeniable. And it's weird because every time new sets come out, people say they're overpriced. I know this has nothing to do with your question, but my favorite thing is when a set will come out. So let's say the 2016 Turbo Tank was 110 bucks and people people were like, oh, that set's trash, it's too small. And I was kind of in that boat. It's very weird how this mindset works, but I was in that boat. And now the set, you know, the set retailed for 110 bucks. No, I didn't even do with it. Not not saying any everyone didn't want anything to do with it. I bought it myself, but still, a lot of people were turned off by that. And you look at it now on eBay, it's like two hundred and twenty dollars sealed, and everyone's like, "Oh, I just got it for one hundred ninety. What a deal!" It's funny how the mindset of the community can shift like that, where it goes from, "Oh, one hundred and ten dollars from Lego, that's overpriced. No, no way, not me." And then you know, once it's two hundred dollars on eBay, getting it for one hundred and eighty-five is just a screaming deal you got to share. It's it's pretty crazy how that can happen. Now that I just glanced back at your question, I think you might be talking about the 2021 sets, specifically the X-Wing and TIE Fighter. They're making them cheaper and smaller. Yes, they're it's both. That's how that works usually. So yeah, the X-Wing and TIE Fighter next year will be underwhelming compared to the previous models that we've seen. I would wager to say the same will be with the Imperial Shuttle because they're all $30 cheaper than the most recent versions of themselves. So, I mean, it makes sense. It may suck when you look at them side by side, but hopefully they're at least worth the price, which is what I think would be the most important thing. Nabosity says, do you trust buying Lego from Shop Goodwill? So Shop Goodwill is basically Goodwill online shopping and it's basically like eBay, you know, you go on there and you bid. I have never actually bought anything from there, but I don't see why you wouldn't trust it. It's literally Goodwill. It's the company they're gonna ship it to you. I, I don't see why there would be a problem with that. I know people that have bought from it and they haven't had a problem. So, I mean, Goodwill, like I've been on, like I said, I've been on there. I've looked at the stuff. I feel like maybe like seven years ago, it was a good secret. And then five years ago, it wasn't anymore by the time I found out about it. And it's like, well, it's not really worth buying stuff on here because everyone knows what they're looking at. Because if you go on there and search up Lego Star Wars, at least when I've been going on there, um, there's quite a bit of stuff. So the problem is it goes for basically market value. And that's what most things go for because that's how market value works. To me, it was like, well, if it's not a screaming deal, like I it's just like, I'll stick to eBay and Mercado and whatever and it is what it is so yeah I don't see why you wouldn't trust it but um I think you can get better deals elsewhere at least from the last time I looked on there Brick City Whip says if we got a Star Wars CMF line what characters would you choose to do for the first wave so I might do a whole video actually um, where I do like a set ideas basically, but for a CMF wave like I guess a CMF draft what do you know just because I think there's a very real possibility of getting a Star Wars CMF in 2021 or more likely 2022 to be honest, but there's two options to me the option one is basically just do a, a wave with Characters from all movies basically, you know, you get a couple characters from episode one You get a couple characters from episode five, whatever, you know You go down the line basically like you can just pick and choose who they want to put in um, From all sorts of movies TV shows, whatever just a conglomerate of things now the other option to me in the the more intriguing one the one that I'm like ooh, This could be interesting and I think either way people will be happy, but there are a lot of clone troopers and it would be pretty damn awesome to get a full-fledged like clone trooper Star Wars CMF where you get phase two Cody, fives, echo, like all of the troop. Like they could do 20 clone troopers in a CMF series. It would be wild. So would they ever do that if even if they did a Star Wars CMF or obviously they, I think they do more than one. Ultimately, I think very low odds on that. I think it's much more likely we get a CMF of Star Wars that's just a conglomerate of movies. But uh, yeah, those are my two options. And uh, I wish the clone one would come true, but it's probably gonna be the conglomerate. But keep an eye out for a video where I talk about ideas for CMF sets because that might not be a bad thing to do with the, the possibility on the horizon. Anyway, guys, that's gonna do it for this episode of Ask MNR. If you guys enjoyed a like, would be greatly appreciated. It'd be amazing if we could crack 5,000 better than last week. Probably not, but hey, wishful thinking. If you have a question you want answered, leave in the comments section down below so I can possibly pick it. Go Pats and go Celtics, and I'll see y'all next week.